And hello everybody, it's Moody Gamer here. And today I'm gonna show you my clock, uh, pocket watch collection and some other clocks that I have, like this one with my girlfriend. So, first, on to these clocks. These are a little bit different because their age is something of a mystery to me. So I have no prior knowledge on workings of them. So, the first one is this one. I fitted with this chain, so I would probably give it to my future girlfriend, maybe. It's an owl, cl uh, owl clock that has traditional quartz mechanism working with battery. It's uh, one of two only clocks that I have which have a battery in them. Other clocks are all mechanic. I I don't say that I don't like mechanic or I like mechanical clocks better than uh, battery clocks. But the battery clocks are they are in their way a little bit more. They are reliable. That's what I'm gonna say. But you always have to check uh, on the battery that you actually have enough battery that it works and it keeps working for mm, some time mm. and you don't need uh, what is it? to go to the clock store and or pocket watch to get it fixed and this uh, watch is actually not a pocket watch it's a necklace watch like it should be worn actually have this right about there like this so you should, you should wear it like this, and it's hard to look, but you actually can somewhat of look at it. And it's easy to get off. I got this actually, because some fucking reason, I got this chain. This is always the problem with this particular casing to put the clocks in the right place that they can actually fit. And this next one, this is different because I tried to fix this actual clock, but I sort of failed at it because it mainspring broke or the secular spring. It's probably Russian. I have, there is no actual markings other than this one that is completely gibberish. And on the cock face, there is nothing else than the Russian letters that actually I can't fucking read. And then uh, there are a couple, and this one doesn't work. And uh, so does not this one actually don't doesn't work. And the only reason is the mechanism is broken. It's the it's a pendulum pendulum spring is broken, so it can't be actually worked. But I can actually show you the mechanism, I just have to use improvised tools because I don't actually have a real life uh, clock thing. So this clock dates to 1800s and it has the mechanism like in 1800s. So this thing uh, with my thumb, this should be turning and this is the mainspring. And that is broken, its spring is broken, so it can't actually work. And you can see because it's not in its place, so it doesn't actually... It's not in a battery, so it can't actually work. And it's been screwed like, I don't know, really fucked up, so it can't actually work. And the servicing is impossible mostly because, well, it's a 200 year old clock. What do you expect? And then there is this one, which I got as same as this. Uh, it's 1800 and... about 1880s. It's about that time. I have no prior knowledge other than its cylindrical watch. And this backside is actually broken, it comes out. But this mechanism is completely different from that other one, because this actually works. And if I can actually get it open... Actually, I need my... Actually, I don't need, I have these scissors. So, if you are not a pocket watch collector or don't work with these, 
I suggest you not do this shit, like, without any prior knowledge on how they work. You shouldn't do this. So now I can show you the mechanism of that clock, or pocket watch. So here is the mechanism. So that big thing that rotates like crazy, that's the second part. That so sh shows you the seconds. And you can hear it ticking. That is the mark of a working watch, because it ticks. Then there is the sec center wheel, or center... Uh, center piece, it moves the hour hand, and under it is the one that moves the minute hand. And this actually moves a little thing here, that moves the second. This is only two of my working mechanical pocket watches. And it's not... It, it's, it's kind of expensive pocket watch because it's I have been on a clock shop and they said it's about 800 euros or 900 euros in that ballpark but now I'm gonna show this one this is actually gifted to me by one of my relatives it's an Omega watch which has I can't say that this is gold this is actually what we finish call call it fool's gold because it's not actual gold this one actually is, uh, it's a little bit dark, but it's silver, and it was, it is sterling silver. So this is an Omega watch. It still can kind of winds up, but it's not actually working, because the pendulum thing is actually broken. But this one I can't get actually open, because you need a really sharp knife to get this one open. So that's about that Omega. So, the last pocket watch that I'm gonna show is actually one of the newest that I got, it's this one. Which you saw in the last video, I had this pocket watch shown, and it's kind of different because it has this, it's sideways, instead of like the others where this part is in here, and the clock face is uh, counterclockwise, like this. and. You can actually see the this thing here shows night or day. Then there are hands, uh, seconds, and every second hour. And on the back side, you can actually see the whole clock mechanism. And it actually is aluminium, so it's actually kind of good, actually, really. As a metal worker, I really appreciate a good pocket watch because they are ones that don't get actually broken or they don't break easily and they are protected by your suit if need to be. So next is this one. I'm gonna take my little friend off of it. This one is a carriage clock from the 1850s. This is actually really 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 old. And you can see uh, this part, I actually manufactured this with uh, water cutter, because it, it had lost its original part, and I couldn't find any of them. So I just took the model and 3D printed a uh, test model, and then made this. So this is actually really interesting clock, because this is, works on the same principle, on a pendulum that turns the coal machine, but this one has a key. Same as the other clocks. So now I need only to wind it a little bit. It has a really heavy spring. And now I need to do this and... Just give it a little bit more speed. So now you can actually see the machine working. And, do you, and to think that this is over 200 years old, like 200 and... how much would I say? It's about 130 years old. Considering it's that fucking old. <laughs> Actually, that isn't enough. It's 170 years, probably. And it does this, uh, it sometimes just stops, but... 
that's all about lubrication and the right spots where you could put the spring. Now it sounds right. And now to close the casing. The door is a little bit warped, so I need to put it somewhere nice. So now you can see the actual clock. So here is the second marker, and here is the interesting part. Well, actually, this is the second marker, and this one is the alarm. It has a little bit of a voice box, or a little bit of a music box to work. But now I'm gonna put it on the right time. So, um, this is the problem when you put your old clocks in some ways. It's about 14, 30, nine or something like that so i just need to scale this back a little bit actually better to do if i'm doing it like this it's easier to do in clockwise not counterclockwise because you will break your fingers if you do this wrong it's actually really frustrating to do these things in this kind of way but there is no other choice Old clocks, they take their own time, and they are old, so they need some lubrication at times. It's actually 42. This is the real part. When you really know the worthy of the clock, and you know it puts you to work. So it works itself. And this is the part that I think thing to say to new collectors start small don't go right away to omegas or something like that don't don't go <laughs> really fast to expensive clocks start with small ones that actually are easy to fix or something like that then have this actual alarm clock that is made by amic suma amic i don't actually know that brand but it's written in English, so it's really easy. And this one also has an alarm to it. It's a mechanical watch uh, or mechanical <coughs> watch, really. Then I have these chains. I don't know what to do with this, so I'm gonna put them somewhere. And last but not least, I'm gonna show my special guest, my Nokia E90 communicator. This is an actual phone from 2007, and it actually works. I used this as my school phone for like, how would I say, a year, before I got this uh, CAT S52. So this is actually a testament to old style of thinking, like how the phones need to be, like robust, durable and not <laughs> and shock resistant. And the funny thing is, this is the... This is the funny part. The, I don't know why they took it out of new phones that you could actually remove the battery. I don't actually realize, I don't know what is the fucking reason. Because it's idiotic to remove the battery. It's really stupid that you can't remove the battery and buy a new one. Like these old phones, you could do that. New phones, you have to take them to the, to the commercial store and get yourself them fixed. Which I actually don't understand, why the fuck would you do that when you could buy a phone like this? It doesn't have the old specs, I know that, but you could call it, text it and you could download everything you need. This is the actual first phone ever to be like, you could download anything you wanted to it. So, that is the thing I don't understand about new phones, because they don't make it easy for you to use them. That's the one thing I don't understand. But this was Multigamer, and we will see each other in some other retrospect. Maybe it's like Cooper, if I'm not wrong, but I'm gonna go to the weekend to my parents with my parents to the summer cottage we have to uh, put down the actual pier that we have. It's actually a really hard thing to do. But this was Multigamer, and we will see each other next time.